Good morning, Belinda. Good morning, Kimberly. Good morning, Christopher. Seatbelts. In the tiny town of Avant in northern Oklahoma, Mindy Englet's day starts well before dawn. Bye, guys. Have a great, great day. I'm the bus driver. I work in the lunchroom. I've done custodial work. I've done it all, and I'm the superintendent. We are doing all we can do. We can't do any more. Boys, what's happening? I could hear yelling from the teacher's room. Avant Public School has 82 students from pre-K to eighth grade. Two years into a pandemic, COVID outbreaks and teacher burnout have left it severely understaffed. Englet can't get anyone to replace the teachers or the bus driver who've left. No one wants to sub. And a few weeks ago, so many staff and students were sick, the school had to shut down for a while. What are you putting together? I'm putting together the kindergarten packets because we currently don't have a kindergarten teacher. So I do all the planning for kindergarten. Every time you go virtual, this is what you have to do? Yes. A few weeks ago, we had to go a week at a time because COVID hit so bad here. We didn't have enough teachers to cover. We didn't have substitutes, so we couldn't cover the teachers that were out sick. I have called all the retired teachers I know. I'll Come on, I'll hire you for a year. Come do this for one year. And it's like everybody is running from education. School staffing shortages are a crisis around the country. But solutions so far have been haphazard and spotty. New Mexico brought in the National Guard to help with its substitute shortage. Kansas is letting basically any 18-year-old with a GED be a sub. And here in Oklahoma, Governor Kevin Stitt signed an executive order allowing any state employee to teach. But like many rural districts across the state, Avant hasn't gotten any of that help. How has it been teaching here? What's it like? I love it. It's been amazing. Englet's son, Michael, works as a teacher's assistant with the pre-K and kindergarten students here. The classroom has been without a full-time teacher since October. It gets really stressful every now and then. Sometimes it can be just two of us in here with all these kids. Because you're, like, pretty new to teaching. Yeah, this is my first year. And I think we've just lost the opportunity to have the best education they can have. Do you think there's going to be a long-term impact for kids? Absolutely. And I think we're already seeing it. Three times five. We won't know the pandemic's full cost to children and learning for years. But in places like Oklahoma, where students were already at a disadvantage before COVID started causing problems, the effects could be extreme. Oklahoma ranks almost last in money spent per student. In the past decade, school districts in dozens of counties, including Avant, have tried dropping down to four-day weeks to cut costs. The state ranks 49th out of 50 in test scores. We are not going to step back and let anybody disinvest in our public schools again. Public school teachers here had the worst pay in the country until they went on strike in 2018. And if Oklahoma's state of the state this week was any clue, public schools stand to lose even more funding this year. I pledge to support any legislation that gives parents more school choice. Because in Oklahoma, we need to fund students, not systems. State legislators have introduced more than a dozen of these, quote, school choice bills that would let parents take dollars from the public school budget and spend them on private or charter schools. With the rhetoric around education more charged than ever, teachers here feel like political pawns. I'll have just a house margarita on the rocks, no salt. Same. Don't bring me me the dog. That's what I want. (laughs) Do it, Mindy. Okay. The Don? First responders are exalted and praised and hailed for their very deserving work. But teachers are the scapegoats for anything in society that's wrong. What's been happening the past few years? Has it been getting even worse? Like, what's what's going on? Well, they thought, you know, the pay raise was great and it was helpful. But we're still not seeing funding in education. They don't care about the raise as much as they care about fund our classrooms. I've had teachers say, I would rather be a greeter at Walmart. I mean, and that's honest. Okay, did you tell them about QT? So QT is a local gas station. The low-wage employee is 
making more than our paras, so more than my teacher aides, for sure. Mm -hmm. At a gas station. Yes, you know, there's a great meme of the Titanic going down with the orchestra yes. that says, you know, teachers right there's now, and teacher. that's it. That's, that is. That's you feel like you're on the Titanic. Oh. oh. I feel like I'm the conductor and we're going down uh -huh. the ship. The future of teaching is grim. A new study found that 55% of teachers are planning to quit the profession or retire early. But for Englet, leaving Avant is not an option. This room, that's where I went to kindergarten. I have been in one of these lockers. That was our fun thing. We'd lock each other in the lockers. This classroom was my favorite teacher's class. This is my mom, and that is Jenny in the cafeteria. That's her grandmother. Oh my so Jenny and I were raised together. This school is what grew me. I grew up in this school. We've got to look at how are we going to fund these classrooms properly so we can give these kids the education they deserve that matches or exceeds the educations of private schools or charter schools. These kids deserve as much as any other kid.